Adventure. Tonight's story by Norman Partington is entitled Tea Kettle Number 4630. Tea kettle. When you're going to consign it to the scrap iron department, get yourself a real locomotive, eh? Oh, a real engine, you say? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Is that what you call that mobile fuse box of yours with its metal coat hanging on top? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what kind of pleasure do you get driving that thing? Flicking over switches and all that. The thing doesn't even sound like an engine. It does the job down efficiently, though, Cooper. <laughs> It'll not be long now before the whole country's electrified. Then you can retire that tea kettle of yours and stop polluting the air. Ah, Frank, they will never retire all 4630. There isn't a gradient in South Africa that this brute couldn't pull a freight train up. <laughs> Listen, man, once I've got steam up, I could take it from here to Cairo. <laughs> With or without a railway line, eh, Cooper? <laughs> ah, man, Frank Parsons. Take your little spinning dynamo away and let the real engine get on with its work, man. <laughs> See you later, Cooper. I guess he's right, Mr. Perry. These old steam engines are just about finished. And they never let us take any trains on any decent journeys. Just something about the marshalling yards. That's all we ever do. Eddie, hey, hey, stop your moaning. You'll get your chance someday when they give you your engine. And then you can make your own choice. As for me, oh, man, I'll stick with the old tea kettle number 4630 until I retire. And listen, young man, take the oil can and give those driving shafts a bit of juice. Hey, and put your coat on unless you want to get soaked in the rain. Ah, uh, rain, I'm sick of it. It's been going on like this for seven days. Here, did, did you hear the radio news about the Tagala River? It's nearing its record height. What about them bridges that cross it? Oh, nothing for you to worry about, Harry. The line superintendent keeps a pretty close check on them. You blow the whistle quickly enough if he's worried. Now push up with that oil can. Just how'd you like to take a ride with us in the cab, eh, superintendent? At least more comfortable with these electric locos than old Corpus Marie in his old tea kettle. You can say that again, Frank. Even so, I spent many years on the footplate of engines like old 4630. But I know you can get attached to steam engines like you can never feel about electric ones. Yeah, but they're more efficient. I agree. Cleaner and more efficient in every way. There's a kind of soul in a steam engine that... Easy with that throttle, Frank. Yeah? There's so much darn rain about, you'd hardly see the lights. Yeah. We're well under the permitted speed for this stretch, Superintendent. Slow us too, Frank. Only a couple of miles off that big bridge across the Chagala. Now, what was the last report, Super? No danger to the bridge, but the water level has gone past its highest recorded mark. Uh-huh. And that means thousands of tons more water pressing against the supports. As breakdown superintendent, I thought I'd better check it myself. Might have to stop traffic over it if this continues. Oh, come off it, Super. I've taken trains over that bridge when the whole river's been so in flood that it looked as if we were crossing the Pacific. Slow us too, Frank. You've got a weight behind you, plus a thousand passengers. I remember 20 years ago taking a freight train across... Frank! Yeah? Slam on your brakes! It's a reverse! Right. A bridge! Couple that engine from the coaches. This thing's likely to slide onto the bridge. Can't you see where the bridge is buckled slightly? The whole thing will go if it gets the added weight of the engine, and it'll take the whole train with it. Open the door. Right. 
The couplings have jammed with the angle of the engine and, and the sudden stop. Merciful heavens! The bridge is breaking up at the other side. Stay with the couplings. Use a sledgehammer and see if you can part them. There's a line telephone by the signal. I'm going to get help. Well, how can you? The power line's down. There are other engines besides electric ones, Frank. Now, you stay there. Hello? Hello? Why the blazes? Hello? What took you so long to answer? Breakdown, you. The Tudela Bridge. Yes, the bridge's the main one. It's going. Halt all traffic both sides and get a breakdown train up here. An emergency. As fast as you can. Well, use 4630. Get her coupled up and tell Cormus for to break every blasted record in getting here. We've got a train on the bridge approaches. The engine's on an incline and slipping. Well, hurry then, man. Get moving. Ready, John Twain? Coupled, Harry? Coupled, Mr. Free. Climb aboard, Harry, and get shoveling coal. I want top pressure. Most of them, Frank. But the lock refused to get out because of the weather. The guard's going through the train hammering those who won't get out. Like this, they see no reason why they should get out when the train looks so safe. But if the bridge goes any more and the line sinks down, even just a few more inches, the loco's going to slide forward and drag the whole train with it. Where the blazers is the breakdown train? We've just got to get those couplings loose. Corvus Paris and our 4630s on their way. What? This is one time, Frank, you can be great through. We still have a few steam engines available. The whole power line's down, and all the electric locos are stopped. Hey, Corvus gets there in time and saves this lot. I'll get down on my knees and pray out loud all night. Mid long gauge is nearly in the red, Mr. Free. It won't take any more pressure. Keep shoveling, Harry. Maybe the old boilers aren't what they used to be, but they'll take that pressure. Please, Mr. Free, the speed limit's 50 and we're doing 70. Seven. You know, Harry, when the old tea kettle was new, it was actually tested at 85 in England before it was sent down here. Not that I've ever done that speed myself, and it. it's against regulations, you know. But I think this is one time I shall find out if those manufacturers were telling the truth. Let's up two more notches, please. Just send your back to that trouble. I hope the breakdown gang of the trucks behind them going to ride. The train I have, Mr. Free. Yes, did you see the people in that station we just passed through? They could hardly believe their eyes at the speed we were going. Oh, maybe they'll start thinking it's quicker to go to Johannesburg by train than by jet aircraft. The river's even higher. And it's taken half the bridge with it on the other side. Did you get all the passengers out, Frank? Honestly, I don't know, Super. As far as the guard chases them out one side, they crawl underneath for shelter or else climb back into the coaches from the other side. It seems daft to them to stay out in the rain and get soaked when there's apparently a good, healthy train standing empty next to them. Well, it's not going to be there much longer if Corvus Farid doesn't get here quickly with that breakdown, gang. Yeah. Frank! Oh, come away! There's another section of that bridge going. Blimey. Just look at it. Must be a hundred feet in length. And the river's just ripped it away. I'm going to have another look at the track under the roadway. I put a marker in here. The track's tilted down two more inches these past 15 minutes. Damn those couplings! Well, suppose Corbus does get here on time. Do you think he'll be able to pull this lot far enough back to safety, Super? I doubt it. If the locomotive tilted down on such an incline, he'll never be able to pull it against its dead weight. Yeah. And candidly, 
we don't get those couplings smashed within this next half hour, the rest of the bridge will go. And so will the whole darn train. Harry, keep a lookout for the line ahead. This is a real bad area we're going to pass through now. Why is that, Mrs. Perry? Because the whole land about here dips right down until it's almost a level of the river. Each time we have a bad rain, the river overflows and floods this part here. I remember once, many years ago, taking a train through when the track was under 12 inches of water. I can tell you, young man, my heart stopped beating for 15 minutes till I got through. What? 12 inches? The miracle didn't get to the piston chambers and stop the engine. No, I had a fair margin of safety, and, and I felt it was worth the risk. Oh, I shall Stand on the track, Harry, quickly! <laughs> Underwater, the, the whole track. Hey, it's just like an inland sea. So we'll, we'll have to back up, Mr. Bury. We can't take it through that door. Oh, shut up, Harry. Let me think. Can you see the signal gantry? Yes. Yeah. Look where the water's there, up to the third cross member, isn't it? Third cross. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. It's about two feet six inches from the ground. Yeah. Two feet six. Our piston chamber's about three feet six inches to spare. I think we can do it, Harry. But we'll have to take it easy. Mr. Free, you, you don't know the condition of the track underneath. How about if it's been washed away or the bed loosened? So if, if you put the weight of the engine on it, the whole train could slide sideways into the river. As it is, we can't even tell where the track's supposed to be and the river starts. It's just a mass of water for nearly a mile. Let me tell you something, Harry. When a call goes out for a breakdown train, it's an emergency. When they teamed up with you at the, the depot, they all said you were a bit crazy. I'm convinced of it. But to take a train through two and a half feet of flooded water, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Okay, Mr. Free, I'll still shovel coal. I just hope the insurance pays our families well. Superintendent, that couplings are so twisted at that angle, we'll have to cut through them with an oxyacetylene torch. We're not going to have time, Frank. If that bridge section slips any lower. Now look, you people, get out of here. Can't you see you're in danger? Keep clear of the train before the whole lot slides into the river. Oh, where the blazers are the police to keep control. Can't get through to us, I suppose. This is low-level ground, and the whole area around here is flooded. Now, what about Corbus and his breakdown train? I'm expecting no miracles. The river's probably burst its bank by now and flooded the track. Yeah. The only thing we can do is stand back and try to see no lives are lost when that bridge goes completely. Oh, I don't know. Old Kubis is such a stubborn chap. He's quite likely to swim through and pull the train along with him. Even the most stubborn chap in the world can't take a steam train through water two feet deep. And that's what I imagine it'll be by now. Slow. Even slower, Mr. Perry. It, it, it's kicking up such a bar wave, it'll flood over the piston soon. The line is level at this part here. But there's just a slight gradient down about half a mile ahead, Harry. How are you going to get through it? It'll be over the piston. Can you handle the regular, Harry? Just keep it at the walking pace. Yeah, but what are you doing, Mr. Perry? Walking on the line ahead. Then as soon as the line dips, I'm going to take it at speed. The water will be up to your thighs. If you're not careful, you get swept away, Mr. Perry. Take over now, Harry. I'm getting down into the track. Jam your brakes for the moment I hold my hand up. Right. Gee, but the water's cold. Right, Harry. Wait until I'm in front of the engine, then up the regulator one notch. Right? Harry, stop it now. The agent's here. Phew. At least the rain stopped. All right, Harry, move over. Get that pressure as high as you can. The gradient's only 200 yards in length. I'm going to back up 
then accelerate like the devil. We'll just bust our way through the water like a cruiser going into battle. <laughs> Not that I've ever seen a cruiser going to battle. They don't have many of them in the sea state, you know. Right, into reverse. Good. Pressure right? <laughs> pressure? If your foreman could see that pressure gauge this minute, we'd both be out of a looking for a job. Oh, in the red, is it? Right in the red. Then here goes. Hold on to your hat, Harry. It's moving. It's taking it. Here. Look at that wave. It's pouring right over the boilers. Don't get to get into the furnace. It's taking all right. Good old sea kettle. Oh! See it shallowing. We're gonna make it, Mr. Marie. The old tea kettle's doing it. Come on, old 4630. Come on. A few yards more. Oh dear old tea kettle, I love ya. We I'll tell you, my boy, we oh. <laughs> I told you the old girl had it in her. Have to regulate that as fast as devil can take us to the bridge. If he's put out the fog signal, I'll check. He's done it. He's a good man, knows his job. Though what train's going to explode them, I wouldn't know. Nothing can get through in this weather. How's the bridge holding, Super? Just listen to it, creaking away. If I just put my weight on it, I'm sure the rest of it will go. I just looked at that marker. The locomotive's down another two inches. They've slipped forward nearly three feet. It's not going to take it. Yeah. Do you hear that, Super? A fog signal detonating. Surely, old Corbett, can't it must be? Yeah, that was a bang. Three fox signal, Harry. Sign of the guard knows his job. In his end of the breakdown, he rushes back along the line and fixes these fine explosives on the track. That was the warning one. In a minute or two, we'll hear two consecutive bangs, and then we'll slam on the brakes. Any sign of the train yet? No, not, not yet, Mr. Perry. So with a night as black as this one, we could smack into it if it were only a dozen yards ahead. Keep your eyes skinned, my boy. Only... There they are! Down, regulator! Out for the anchors, honey boy! I'll shake out the breakdown, too. I want oxyacetylene torches on the couplings. The loco is ready for going into the river and pouring the train with it. Corvus, when the men are out, back up your train half a mile, uncouple, then bring the tea kettle down here and couple onto the back of the train, okay? Corvus, take it easy with that coupling. No jarring or you'll push the entire train into the river. Jarring me? <laughs> Man... I can couple onto that train as softly as a mother kissing her baby. Just watch it. Just watch it and see how a real railwayman does the job. Slowly, Corbett. Twelve more inches. Slowly. Six inches. Three inches. Easy now. Now lock your brakes and be ready to reverse if we get the signal. Corbus, I've got a very light from out of one of the breakdown trucks. If I fire it, uncouple and back away, Don, quick, because that'll mean the train sliding into the river. I think we're going to be too late. Foreman tells me it'll take him nearly an hour to cut through those links. Oh, the bridge isn't going to last that long. You can almost feel the line slipping down. On the river. I'm just wondering. What, Super? If I dare take the risk. Risk? What have we got to lose? Except the old train. What have you in mind, Super? Those couplings. Yeah? We can't wait an hour to cut through them. We've got to get them unfastened within minutes. Nothing can do it quicker than a torch, Super. Except. Except what? Blast them. With dynamite. Dynamite? You'll only have to cop near that bridge and the whole lot will go into the river. We always have a supply of dynamite in the breakdown trucks for emergencies. Tell the foreman, Frank, to bring me three sticks immediately. 
of it or some mad thing. Get to it. move on, Frank. Three sticks and a fuse. Right. Corbett! Corbett for me! Down here! Okay, what's it now, Papa? What's it now? I hope you're not going to ask me to drag the train and the loco back off the bridge. Because even the old tea kettle can't do that with a loco at that angle. Not that, Corbett. I'm going to blast the couplings, free the train from the loco, and then you've got to drag the train back to safety before it follows the loco into the river. Can you do it, Corbus? Ah, man, even miracles. So long as they're only little miracles, are possible with old 4630. Well, this is going to be a big miracle, Corbus. I'm setting dynamite on the couplings. I warn you with a shout. You'll have just three minutes before they detonate. Have steam up to maximum pressure. Put the loco into reverse... Take up a slight pressure, not too much. And the very second the dynamite blows, get that regulator up and back away with the whole train as, as quickly as possible. And you've got that, Corbus. Got it, Uber. And look here, Corbus, for No heroics. The chances are that when the dynamite blows, so will the bridge. And if the couplings haven't been cut, then the train and the old tea kettle is likely to be dragged forward, straight into the river. So you and your fireman be ready to jump if that happens. Okay, Corbus. I have no fears about that. If old tea kettle starts to go for a swim, then we're going to part company pretty darn quick. It's right there, Sue. Then we should have a clean break. Leave the explosives to me, Frank, and go and make sure everybody's out of the area. Right, I'll do that. Tell that guard to go through the train again. And if he finds anybody inside, to boot him out. Right. There's less than a 50-50 chance of pulling this off. Now, hurry it up, Frank. Harry. For well, this little laugh, I think you'd better clear out the camp. Then there'll be one less for me to worry about. No, no, I'm staying, Mr. Perry. You can't look after the engine and stoke the furnace at the same time. Don't be a crackpot. Now, clear off this wood, please. Now, don't do that, Mr. Perry. I want to say, it's my job just as much as it is yours. Corbett, Perry! Corbett! Ready, Super? Lighting the fuse now, Corbett. Three minutes from my signal. Ready? Ready? One... on the regulator. Harry, more sand on the tracks beneath the driving wheels. Ready. Fifteen seconds to go. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Come on, get blowing. Devil! There it is. Place of up-regulator. More sand, Harry. Don't move him, Mr. Ferry. Yes. Down well is, but the wrong way. She's being dragged through the train. Frank, the piece of the coupling's still holding. Give me the sledge. Get back. The bridge is going, and the loco's going with it. Into forward gear for a few feet. Try and jerk stop to see if we can snap the couple. The old train sliding forward. There's a loco. It's crashing into the river. Old chap, you pulled off the miracle. 
We've lost the bridge in the electric locomotive, but we've saved the train. And not only the train, Corbis, but at least 200 of those darn passengers have got back into the coaches. What do you think we ought to do about them, Super? Get the police to charge them for disobeying orders in an emergency? The whole lot of them could have lost their lives if the train had gone to the river. Ah, oh, man, leave them alone. Just let old tea kettle 46, that he takes the train back in real style. It's a free ride for them today, Super. It certainly will be. <laughs> and it looks as if old T-Cat was going to be on regular service until we get all these power lines fixed up again. Oh, Superintendent, why don't you scrap the electrical lines and, and get real locomotives to do the job again? I can easily teach Frank to drive a steam engine again. <laughs> <laughs> is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Duffenthal. Mm-hmm.